to see you again. Good Welcome to see you, Jenny. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Okay, now explain this for people. Carol tells you how to locate the source of your natural energy and focus it on making your life better. What do you mean? <laughs> That's a good <laughs> question. Well, um, I believe that everybody has a talent. Everybody has some gift that in them, and they're born with it. And a lot of times mm. we go through life completely unconscious, or we get told a lot of times that we're no good, or who do we think we are. We get notched down. And a lot of times we just don't think to look inside and see what we really, you know, who we really are in there. And you can make the most of you. Look at yourself. I mean, you love what you're doing. You yeah. know, you're, you're very successful. And you know that you have to nurture that inner spark to get where you are. But I don't think people think that's a fair analogy. They, go, they look at me because I've got this mm -hmm. show, and they don't know about my past life. They don't right. know, uh, you know, and I, I can tell you someday, but I won't know because it would take too long. But, right. um, but they're looking at themselves thinking, yeah, but she's TV, but she's on TV. But what about me? What about mm -hmm. me? I want to be something, and, and I'm not. What, refer to me. Exactly. Well, it, that's why in my book I write about ordinary people. That's exactly why I chose ordinary people to talk about their life process. Because I know celebrities look like they're in a category unto themselves. Yeah. And they're people. You're a person. And yeah. now you're, and you're Deanie Petty now, but you're always a person in there. Yeah. So, uh, we're, you know, we're born with something. Everybody, no matter whether they become a celebrity or not, has something to offer the world. What is natural energy when you talk about natural energy? Well, the natural energy is we're we're always in this flow of energy you know doctors don't know what the energy is they can't define it but they know when you're dead you don't have it anymore. the essence of life itself it's life itself pouring through us and we're going to have that energy no matter what we're doing we can direct it as much as we can consciously it's but it's always flowing through us so it's our natural okay. life force and the purpose of your life the purpose you believe that each each one of us has a purpose or several or well it i can't say that i know what each person's purpose is right but i do believe that each of us is coming into life called we come here for a reason it's not a random event our birth is not a random event okay so we come here with something that we want to achieve it may not see i think one of the big obstacles uh, in finding your life purpose is assuming that it's a job title or an occupation and it isn't it could be developing self-esteem. It could be developing a characteristic. Um, you know, maybe you, you come in with a uh, natural greed or impatience or arrogance, and your life is spent trying to work on yourself and, and develop more compassion, more love. I think at, at the base, everybody's life purpose is to be learning to be more compassionate and loving and aware, but that's a very broad-based purpose. So we are born and we come here for a purpose. So can I, could I say that another way, that we come here to learn something? Each one of us has a, a, a major yes. life lesson? Yes, learning and making choices. So you choices. believe in reincarnation? Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, so I, that we come through life to learn a lesson. Part of your, and, and you're right, because when people think purpose in life, they're thinking, okay, it's a job title. Right. I'm just going to figure out what I can, right. but that's one of the things. What am I, what am I going to do or be that's going to right. make me happy? You told right. a wonderful story about being doing a phone-in show from Toronto to Michigan. Yes, yes. I was I was talking on the show, uh, and a woman called in, and she said that she, she her voice sounded very sad, and she said she was doing numbers accounting, and she really wanted to get back to working with children, but she didn't see how she could do that. I guess she felt financially it wasn't, you know, she wasn't able to do that. Well, I talked with her and told her that you know, um, the choices we make are part of our purpose here. We, we have to set ourselves sometimes as a priority and say, this is where I want to go. So we talked, but the point of the story was about 10 minutes after um, I got off the interview, the phone rang in my hotel room, and the host said, you know what happened? This man, Kathy's daughter, heard this the woman, show. This, this, uh, this woman, Kathy, her father heard the show and heard his daughter say this, and he said he would had no idea she was so unhappy and that he wanted to help her achieve her goals. So here you have a father and a daughter connecting over the radio where a Well, obviously airways. we're talking much before right, or exactly. they missed something. One of the points that one of the things you like to talk about that the purpose in your life is not just a job title, it's a way of fulfilling yourself and learning your life lesson and in order to achieve that goal that there's a couple of things that will help you in the universe. In terms of making choices you're saying and yes. Um, yeah, I think that you know you can be doing a lot of things in life and you it's not a 
a good idea to put yourself down for any level of work that you're doing because if you're showing up every day and putting your heart into it and doing the best you can, I have a great story in the book. One of my favorites is about Mary who was a single mom. She was working at a job. She hated this job. She had another career that she really wanted to develop, but it wasn't happening. Right. So this is one of those cases where she had the passion, but the money was not fo following along. So what to do? So finally she said, I just decided to turned toward my job, she in a sense really surrendered her passion for a moment and put all of her creative energy into her job. Well, in three weeks after she made this decision, everything shifted. She got moved upstairs, she tripled her income, wow. she started liking the people she was working with, and she stayed there another three years. And she told me later, she said, you know, the reason I think I didn't, I didn't, the other job didn't happen, I didn't have the internal strength for it. So sometimes timing is a big factor. How many people hate their job? Oh, I I think quite a few. If, if you can say, I love what I do, mm -hmm. you're doing your purpose. Your purpose shows up My purpose everything. is a talk show. That's it. That's okay. It. I, I, I suspect that's your definition. If you love what you're doing, you're on purpose. Yes, and okay. if you're learning something, you're on purpose. Okay. And, and if how do you know if you're off purpose? You don't like what you're doing. You're not sorry. learning anything. You feel, you feel miserable. You okay. feel depressed. You feel, and I hear a lot of people say they feel disconnected. They feel okay. disconnected from something, and that's a sure sign. If you happen to have those feelings, if you come back, Carol has some more uh, wonderful pieces of uh, information that can help you out. Tomorrow, author Joe Fisher makes a fascinating case for reincarnation. Guests of the Dini Petty Show stay at the Royal York Hotel with its finely appointed guest rooms, rooftop herb gardens, world-class cuisine, and timeless elegance. The Royal York Hotel is the heart of comfort and style in downtown Toronto. Okay, from the book. You know, a call entitled The Purpose of Your Life by Carol Adrian. We have seven principles, okay? And these principles are um, to help you. This is like fill in the blanks. Yeah, this is to help <laughs> you get focused. Um, one of the first ones is acting on passion. And what that means is doing something when your guts really tell you this is the right thing to do. You know, it's so important to stay in touch with your body, first of all, because your body is going to be your biggest guidance system about what, what is um, the right direction to take. Right. And a lot of times people say they don't know what their passion is. I hear that quite a bit. But your passion is in the things that you're interested in. You know, Joseph Campbell, the great mythologist, when he was 20 years old, he didn't know what his passion was either. And he was told to keep track of his thoughts and what he was interested in for a whole month, for 30 days. And he did that. So he began to see, I guess, that he was interested in myth and ancient Isn't that an interesting thing, to write down what interests you every mm -hmm, day mm -hmm. or where your thoughts take and notice you. notice where your attention so goes. So you keep a journal and write down, I guess you could do a bit in the morning, a bit at night, however you want to do it, right. and just write where your attention is, and then look back, I've never done that. That's a really interesting one. Right. Okay, act on passion number two is be discerning. Yes, well, you know, you, we're getting bombarded all the time with all yeah. kinds of things, all kinds of issues. So you have to pick what is your, what is most interesting to you? Where can you make a difference? So you have to discriminate. Discerning is, you know, discriminating and making a choice. Okay, listen very carefully to unspoken feelings is principle number three. Right, well listening to what your instincts are telling you. When you get up in the morning, maybe you need to make a phone call instead of following a plan, you need to make a phone call and that's the person you need to talk to today. So. I always tell people to participate more and plan less. Okay. Um, also, unspoken feelings, if you're around or in some situation where you're uncomfortable, get right. out quick. Right, exactly. Okay. Notice where you lose energy. Mm -hmm. That's the same idea. If you're in a job situation or a situation where you're drained every day, then you need to really think about that. And most of us will put up with that and will think it's something wrong with us. But I think it's telling you that you need, you're not on purpose and you need to make a shift. Okay, that can be a job or a person or any situation yes. in which you find yourself in. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's one. This is principle number five is um, commit. Yes. There's a lot of us out there who will try many different things and we're you know, dabbling, dabbling, dabbling. And yet at some point, if you're going to be on purpose, you have to commit to something and take a step 
and really stay with that for a while. Like the lady you talked about with the job that wasn't going anywhere. Right. She just, right. as you said, she turned towards her job. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, assume I like this one. This I love. Assume synchronicities or life coincidences, life coincidences are coming your way. Yes. Explain what synchronicity means. Well, it's you know it's those things, uh, those wonderful times when a door opens and you just can't imagine. I had a great one with uh, my publicist actually. Um, she told me that she had she was uh, working with a success coach, and who told her you know you need to relax more in your work. You're working too hard. So she decided to stay home got a cup of coffee, sat down, turned on the television. At that moment, she saw a picture of me on this C-SPAN, very short clip that I didn't even remember making at a book fair talking about my publicist and how much I liked her. That's a miracle to me. And that was just the moment in, in her and life. And she was the publicist she was you the were publicist. talking she's, about. She's seeing me, her oh, client. Wow. It, who could have predicted that? And it was just like that little support that she needed to know. Oh, I'm on the right track. I'm so synchronicity right is a little thing that happens in yes. the universe that will come to you and will help you out right. and is good. So be aware that they exist. Exactly. And more will happen. Okay. I hear it all the time. Yeah. The more you open yourself to the possibility. Right. The more it will happen for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. If you, it's, it's, remember that bumper sticker you used to see some time ago, expect miracles? I always loved that. Because if you're yeah. expecting good luck to come your way, that's focusing on what you want. Then by the law of attraction in the universe, you're going to have more of what you want coming your way. Okay. Now, um, the last one is trust the process. Yes, trust the process and really... The process of of your own life process that you are on track I think a lot of times we get depressed thinking we're off track but there is something going on sometimes you lose steam and and uh, it's part of a germination it's not time for you to move ahead right then like I told about Mary's story uh, so you really have to trust now I have another great story about a woman who was a secretary and what she did was a simple exercise of just noticing what she really valued about being a secretary and it shifted everything for her. She just stayed from disliking to enjoying. Exactly. And her she got a better job and everything. So it was it wasn't even a big thing she did, it was a small thing. Carol Adrian has been on quite a journey. You worked with James Redfield mm -hmm. uh, when he wrote the Celestine Prophecy and then you've gone off to do your right. own things and there's another book coming. And this is um, the latest. Finding your place in the world using synchronicity, intuition, and uncommon sense, the purpose of your life. We're back in a moment. We didn't talk a lot about uncommon sense. Next, our 10th anniversary quiz, Profile Superstar, Shania Twain.